It's Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. I'm gonna get right into this video today, a lot to talk about. Uh, as I'm making this video, uh, markets are pretty flat, although the Dow Jones is now currently down over 300 points, and there's a couple reasons for that. Let's talk about one of them. Hawkish Fed speak slams stocks into red. This just came out on the hedge. Uh, you have uh, Mary Daly, she's the uh, Fed president, uh, for the San Francisco Fed, Charlie Evans from the Chicago Fed, and Loretta Mester from the Cleveland Fed. All of them came out today and really uh, squashed and cooled these markets down. And uh, basically what they came out and said today is they want to see interest rates at year end around 3.5%. Next interest rate hike, they're saying 50 to 75 points. Uh, they're not going to rule out a 75 basis point rate hike in September. Uh, said that if we don't see improvement, we may rethink the path uh, a little higher. Uh, inflation isn't leveling off also, uh, is what they said. So this to me says that they're going to continue raising rates, no doubt, uh, through the end of this year. And a lot of people still believe that the Fed is going to reverse course. And I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, if they do, we're going to have big problems. If they don't, we're going to have big problems. No matter what they do, this whole thing is going to be a disaster. But if you're betting that they're going to reverse course uh, and lower rates anytime soon, not going to happen. Uh, let's talk about some more news today. Let's talk about the data. Job openings fell sharply in June as labor market show signs of slowing. Employment vacancies fell to about 10.7 million. Most of these jobs, as you already know, are in the service sector. Uh, they are low paying, minimum wage jobs, no benefits, uh, no 40 hour work weeks. These are the majority of jobs now that are available. And this is the third biggest plunge in job openings uh, in history. Hiring also dropped 2%. And they told us today that unemployment is 3.6%. Do you believe these unemployment numbers? Do you even believe that there's 10.7 million job openings out there? There may be, but we know the type of jobs that they are. These are service sector, low paying, low wage, uh, no room for growth, no benefits, and, and for the most part, not even full time. You're not even going to get 40 hours. So this is the economy now, uh, this, this service sector economy that we have, and it is going to be very, very difficult to remain a superpower uh, with a service sector based economy, an economy where 70% of our GDP is based on consumption. So we are consuming, consuming, consuming with money we don't have. Uh, people are driving cars they can't afford, they're paying rent they can't afford, they're living in houses they can't afford, uh, and they're working in a service sector industry where they're making you know, seven, 10, 12, $15 an hour, depending on what state you're in. How about this? This to me is alarming. Uh, this to me, is an indicator uh, that confirms, reconfirms, and reinforces everything you and I have been saying. Credit card balances jump 13%, highest leap in over 20 years as inflation outpaces wage growth. Americans must contend with the higher cost of living, uh, which is growing at the fastest pace uh, in, in history. Uh, get this, now this to me, is startling. We go from alarming to startling. 233 new credit card accounts were opened in the second quarter. This is the most since 2008. And anytime we compare anything to 2008, you better listen, because this is a warning sign. Uh, when they start comparing the housing market to 2008, when they're uh, comparing uh, new credit card accounts to 2008, you better listen, because this is a warning. People uh, that are opening up these, these credit card balances already have multiple credit cards. They're opening cards because they're going to need more, re more money to rely on, to live on. And, and so somebody that might have uh, five, six, seven credit cards is going to go and get one or two or three more credit cards 
because they, they know what's coming. They know that they're going to be forced to rely on these credit cards to pay the rent, to pay the grocery bills, to pay the phone bill, to make the car payment, whatever the case may be. People know what's happening. Think about this. These people who, who argue with us and want to debate us that everything is okay, why in the world did we see 233 million new credit card accounts opened uh, just in the second quarter? That, to me, is scary. This is very, very concerning. You should be very, very concerned about what this is telling us. This means that people are broke. They're broke, and they're going to go get more credit cards. This isn't their first credit card. They're getting more credit cards. Uh, they're stocking up. Uh, with credit cards because this is what they're going to be living on. They're running out of time. This is just buying time. You know this. These people are buying time. Something is going to give. Something is going to break for millions of people. Uh, something is going to break right here in the U.S. economy. And you're going to need more than credit cards to survive what is coming. If you're dependent on a credit card right now, what are you going to do in 6 to 12 months from now? What are you going to do when they start cutting those credit lines in half or more or when they start shutting those credit cards off? What do you do? This is alarming, ladies and gentlemen. Household debt. Here's another one on CNBC. Household debt tops $16 trillion for the first time, fueled by higher inflation and interest rates. $11.4 trillion alone is just in mortgage balances. A lot of these people in the, in the past couple years that bought houses, uh, they're going to be absolutely ruined, destroyed, because we're going to see so much equity vacuumed out of this housing market. It's going to make your head spin. Um, but $11.4 trillion in mortgage balances, this is where people's wealth is. They do not understand how vulnerable they are at this point and what is going to happen to the housing market. They are literally going to get their faces ripped off when this housing market collapses. So we have millions of people reliant on credit cards. We have millions of people whose wealth is in their homes who are getting more credit cards so that they can continue uh, to survive and keep their heads above water while the inflation, uh, while in interest rates go up, and while the cost of living uh, goes up, and the cost of their standard of living continues to go up, and people are going to go broke trying to keep their standard of living. People in the middle class right now don't realize, so many right now do not realize that they're not middle class. Uh, that they are poor and they don't want to admit it and they're not going to admit it. Their, their idea is just pull money out of the home, use the home as an ATM and go get five more credit cards and just hang on and hope that something is going to fix this. Uh, nothing's going to fix this, ladies and gentlemen. Y y you know, when you hear the Fed today talking about the continuation of raising rates, we have to think that what if the Fed doesn't reverse course? What if the Fed purposely blows these markets up and blows up the economy? What if it's all being done on purpose? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Uh, they could reverse course. They could reverse course tomorrow. I have no idea. But what if they don't? What if we head into next year and we're still raising rates? What are people going to do? What's going to happen to the housing market? You know exactly what's going to happen. And anybody that has to service debt, look, we're going to get more than likely another 75 basis point rate hike in September. That's not far away. To service that credit card debt, some of these people, you know, living off of five, 10, 12 plus credit cards now, the day of reckoning for these people is coming. And many of these people, yes, they went out, they bought a Dodge Charger, they bought a Dodge Challenger, they're paying $900, $1,000 a month, and the car's going to be gone pretty soon too. And that's just the reality of where we're at today. This isn't to, to judge anybody. Uh, this isn't to condemn anybody. This isn't to hope ill will on anybody. This is reality. This is what happened. This is what's been going on. And it's all going to come to a head and people are made very, very bad financial decisions are going to pay a very, very severe price here. Why are we seeing more and more homeless people? Why are we seeing more people at the food banks? Why are we seeing more credit card debt, more household debt? People now uh, have blown through the through their savings and they are now living on debt. They are living on credit cards. Uh, the hedge today, lying about this economy will only make the coming crash 
worse. I couldn't have said it better myself. You know, they have been lying to us about the health of this economy for a very, very long time, many, many years. And it's only going to continue to exacerbate uh, this financial crisis and the damage that is going to come along with this financial crisis. You know, if you uh, spoke to your doctor and you had a serious disease and your doctor told you that it's not that bad, that in fact you're healthy, uh, everything's going to be fine, don't worry about it. While this disease is ravaging through your body, you're going to get sicker and sicker at some point and die. Would you rather your doctor just tell you the truth and say, look, here's what we can do. We can give you this medicine. We can give you this therapy. We can give you this surgery and it's going to uh, save your life or it's going to allow you to live longer. Uh, what would you what would you want? Would you want somebody to be honest with you? Would you want a doctor to be honest with you and, and, and be straight up with you and tell you, look, you're going to go through some pain. You're going to go through some therapy. It might be a rough six months. It might be a rough year, but we can save your life. We can give you a better quality of life, but you're going to have to do this. Or would you rather have a doctor just tell you everything's okay, don't worry about it, go home, and, and, and don't think about it, don't worry about it while this disease ravages through your body. I would rather have a doctor be honest with me so that we can resolve the problem as quickly as possible because if you don't, the problem continues uh, to, to expand out of control. And that's exactly what's been happening for years. Since the OA crisis, uh, we've been lied to. We've been told everything's gonna be okay uh, and it hasn't been okay. And now we're going to see a day of reckoning here. And it's not going to just be a day of reckoning. It's going to be years of reckoning. They've begun raising rates, which was a shock to a lot of people. And here's another shock. They're going to continue to raise rates. And here is another shock. They may not reverse course. And these people out there who believe everything is going to be okay, that the Fed's got your back, uh, that... Don't worry about anything. Everything's going to be okay. It's not going to be okay. Uh, it is not going to be okay. You know it and I know it. But if you want to believe everything is okay, if you want to hope everything into existence, go right ahead. I'm going to continue to take action because, again, I'm just being honest with you. Uh, it gives me no uh, satisfaction to report all this terrible news on a daily basis. I've told many of you uh, for the, the past year, uh, I would much rather be doing car videos, going to Cars and Coffee, driving a Ferrari and making videos, laughing and hanging out with other people and their Ferraris and their Lamborghinis and their Porsches. And, and that would be a lot more fun. That would be great. But when I see people doing that, I, and, and, and you know, God bless you if you're driving your Ferrari or your Lambo today, or your Porsche, your Corvette, whatever, God bless you. I feel I have a fiduciary duty to all of you, my country, and to God. And until we get things resolved, if we ever do, uh, I will not be making car videos, that's for sure. My work right now is my loyalty to all of you to wake up, to continue to wake up, to not get complacent. Many of you have been awake longer than I have. Many of you are more prepared than I am. But for the people out there who are not, I have a duty to continue to try and wake you up, even if you want to write negative comments. But the, the great thing is you're watching, you're listening, and you can't stop watching and listening because that's the power of the truth. There's something that attracts you to this channel, even though you don't like what I'm saying, but it's the truth and you know it. And so... As much as you're fighting it, you know I'm right. You know that the people in the comments, 98.5% of them are right. And that's why you're here today. And I hope that at some point you take action like I did. And so many people that watch these videos, that watch this channel, have taken action. I hope that at some point you do the same before it is too late. Here's another one from the hedge today. What happens next? Nobody knows, but it does not look good at all. Uh, watching um, the news today, and not to get political, but we saw Nancy uh, get off uh, the plane uh, in Taiwan today. And this, to me, is going to cause more escalation. We, we see what's happening uh, over in Eastern Europe. Now we're going to be escalating things over in Asia. 
how does China respond to this now? And do we need China or does China need us? It seems to me that we need China a lot more than China needs us. Um, when you look at the deals that China's cutting with Saudi Arabia, Russia, India, uh, Russia and China working on an oil pipeline for eight years now, working uh, on trading their own currencies, trading uh, oil, trading gold, uh, working with countries like India and Saudi Arabia and so many more of these BRIC nations and so many more that want to come over to the, the uh, BRIC nations. Um, and now we're going to continue to escalate things in Eastern Europe, escalate things in Asia. And I don't think the average American quite understands the power of China now, uh, the power of Russia. You look at Russian's, Russia's currency, it's the best performing currency this year in the entire world. Uh, you look at the amount of oil production, oil sales, they're making money hand over fist. And you look at the power of China, the four biggest banks in the entire world, and I don't think anybody can argue they really are the biggest economy in the world. They make literally everything. And yes, they have their problems. I know that they're, they're having issues in their real estate market, uh, what's happening in the mortgage market over there. I understand that. But I, I think that China is going to continue to grow. And I think as long as we continue to escalate things, China is going to work with other countries such as Russia. Uh, to accelerate their dominance and to officially become the world superpower. Uh, look, we are dealing with nuclear superpowers with Russia and China, who now we have forced to befriend one another. I, I don't see how we win a war against either one of those countries, especially both of those countries combined. And I don't see how we can beat China now uh, economically. Uh, they're so big, so powerful, producing so much. I don't see how we win. So militarily, economically, I, I think America is on borrowed time and that we unfortunately are going to be passing the torch on. And that isn't because I hate America. I love this country. Uh, I would die for this country. Uh, I, I make these videos for people in this country uh, to prepare for what's coming. I don't ever, I, I don't want to see it happen, but I'm not dumb. And I'm not naive, just like you. This is why we're preparing, because we see a transition now where America now is going to take a back seat uh, to other countries. We are the biggest debtor nation on planet Earth. Uh, we've gone around the world and abused uh, our power with the world reserve currency. Uh, countries now have seen what we did uh, with this power where we could shut off a country's bank accounts, not accept payments, um, not allow them to, to purchase uh, oil from other countries with the U.S. dollar and just the control and the weaponization of the U.S. dollar. And the world has seen that. And the world now is going to take action against the U.S. And now when we have Nancy getting off a plane uh, in Taiwan, uh, that that's concerning. Uh, these people have no idea what they're playing with. They're playing with fire. Uh, countries like Russia and China are no joke, ladies and gentlemen. No joke. Uh, they are much more powerful uh, than we are being told. The technology, the hypersonic, subsonic uh, missiles, the nuclear power, the size of their military, uh, both of these countries is no joke. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't want to see America fall. I don't want to see us fail. And look, there is a way to, to save this. We have got to start producing. We need to start manufacturing. Uh, we've got to stop spending money all over the world. This is a big problem. The average American is being taxed to death, and we are not stopping spending. Every year, the tax rate goes up and up. Uh, this country uh, takes in so much tax revenue and yet we have a major deficit, major debt, because our politicians cannot stop spending. And if we cannot stop spending, if we cannot start producing and making things or putting people back to work with 40-hour work weeks, with real wages, and having that U.S. dollar actually have purchasing power again, real purchasing power, not comparing it on the dollar index with all these other sick puppy fiat currencies, but having real purchasing power like it did 50 years ago, we're going to be in big trouble. We are going to be in big trouble if we 
do not get our act together here very, very quickly. I, don't, I do not know how much time we have, but if one country is making everything and producing everything in the world and other countries are, are drilling oil millions of barrels uh, a day and looking at other payment mm -hmm. systems, uh, building up their gold reserves, and if we're just going to sit around and be a, a debtor nation or a nation of consumption that doesn't make anything but just consumes, you do not have to be a rocket scientist to figure mm -hmm. out where this is all going. Um, we're going to be in very, very big trouble. And we're in big trouble right now. And if we do not do something immediately, it's over. This country is not going to be a first world nation. And your standard of living, whether you want to admit it or not, is going to fall. So um, very interesting what's happening over there. Uh, will we see any kind of retaliation? Remember, 90% of our pharmaceutical pharmaceuticals come from Asia. Uh, if we got into a real disagreement with China and they started cutting off our pharmaceuticals, uh, they started cutting off uh, cheap goods and products here that we're not making, what do we do? I mean, we can't even get tires for our tractor trailers. We can't get tires for our farm equipment. Uh, we cannot get parts for cars. We, can, we, we can't get chips. Where do you think all this stuff is coming from? Uh, we are, we're in big trouble right now. I, 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 mean, I've never, I mean, you go by the car lots, nobody's there. There's no cars on the lots. Nobody's working. I, I, I mean, this whole thing is straight out of the twilight zone. Now, here's another issue, and this is why we're in trouble. This administration yesterday just agreed to send over another $550 million uh, to Ukraine. What would $550 million do right now for your city, for your town? Uh, why, are, why are people right here not getting help? I, I mean, think about this. this is over a half a billion dollars, just like that, on top of the other trillions of dollars that have already gone over there. And I have nothing against the Ukraine people. I'm not here to get political. I'm not taking sides. We are talking reality. I look at the infrastructure here in America, I, driving down I-10 yesterday through the Coachella Valley and just trash everywhere, tents popping up more and more off the freeway. I've got a tent literally one mile from my house where people are living in a tent. Another half mile up from that is three RVs off into the desert. People have been living out there for weeks. Uh, another mile from that, I've got two more RVs uh, right at the uh, freeway entrance off off the beaten path in the middle of the desert, two more RVs out there that have been out there for months. I mean, every day, more tents and more RVs popping up. Uh, I just helped out a gentleman, thanks to all of you too, who was broken down near my gym, been living out of his Jeep, Cherokee, for four or five weeks, uh, had, a, had a flat tire, couldn't move his vehicle. Uh, I did help him out. Uh, but this gentleman, you know, he's he's getting no help, has Social Security, but it's literally paying nothing. Um, why are we not helping out our vets? Why are we not helping out our homeless? Why are we not helping out the people on the streets that have mental disorders? They should not be on the streets. There are so many people that need help right now. Families who have kids who are struggling, who are working two, three jobs, cannot make it. But we're sending over billions of dollars uh, to other countries. Unbelievable. So another $550 million heads over to Eastern Europe. Uh, so I'm going to wrap it up right there, but I want to share one, maybe two last articles with you before I go. And the last two come from the hedge today. Office space market faces economic downturn. Uh, I've seen so many vacant office spaces in LA County, San Diego County, Orange County, Riverside County, San Bernardino County. Uh, it is unlike anything I've ever seen before. But it says right here in the article, real estate transactions and listing activity continue to cool down and the market is now factoring in an increased probability of an economic downturn over the next 12 to 18 months. Goldman Sachs uh, Shandi Luthra says, uh, no doubt about it, we've been watching this play out for over a year. Massive vacancies of these big office buildings, of course, vacant retailers, vacant restaurants. Uh, this is continuing and will continue to get much 
much worse. And so what does that, what, what does that tell us, the outlook of the economy? Who, is, who owns these buildings? How about the bondholders who invested in all this commercial real estate? What is going to happen? Uh, it, it just seems that at some point, we're going to wake up one day and all this stuff is going to break loose. And it is going to be hell on earth when people realize uh, that the Fed is no longer going to be able to help them, uh, that these markets are no longer going to be able to be manipulated, uh, and that bondholders and investors are going to get absolutely smoked. Uh, one last thing I want, to, I want to talk about, another article I was reading on The Hedge, uh, spam, how they're having to put spam in these um, protective plastic boxes you know, like when you go and, and buy things, maybe like razor blades at the store now, they have to put them in these plastic see-through containers with, with um, chips uh, because, you know, the, the, they're stolen so much. Well, now they're doing that with spam in New York uh, because of the crime, the inflation, uh, they're now having to secure cans of spam uh, with sensors in these little plastic see-through boxes. Think about where we are at today, ladies and gentlemen. As I leave you today, we live in a world now where they have to censor and put a can of spam in a protective case with a censor to try and stop the, the, the theft of spam. Think about where we're at. And think about where we're going to be six to 12 months from now if we're having to secure cans of spam right now. Massive vacancies, job losses, job hiring slowing, interest rates going up, inflation going up, world peace in jeopardy, uh, big, big trouble, and what now, what kind of recourse could we see now from other countries uh, like Russia and like China? Think about some of these things. Think about your economic safety. Think about your physical safety. Think about your, your plan. Uh, think about where all this leads to and what can you do right now today? What can you do right now today to put the odds in your favor? Think about that. God bless all of you. Thanks for watching. Share this video. Please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. God bless.